In this video, we are stealth camping a wind turbine. Uh, renewable resources are all the rage these days. And, um, you know, kind of cool looking from a distance, if I don't say so myself. Um, I've been looking at, I've seen these things like forever. We have them all over Wisconsin. And, you know, I've been looking at them and I really think that, uh, I really think it would make for a cool location. Especially if we got any wind going because they make a kind of a cool swishing sound. Uh, as they go, but I guess that's really gonna all depend on whether or not they've got this thing turned on. Um, sometimes they're just not turned on, so. Check it out. I don't know if you can see it or not. Can you see it? I can't see it. Dude, seriously? Dude, the sun is so bright. Let me go over here. I go over here, I can. There we go. No, the sun's not in my eyes. All right, so, look at that tree. Okay, so that tree right there. Can you see it behind me? It should be behind that tree. Right there. There they are. All right. All right, so we're going. I had some technical issues. Okay, testing. Testing one, two. Gotta make sure that the microphone is picking up forever. I'm on my way down the sidewalk. It took a little bit longer than I thought. I got an audio system. Test one, two. One, two, test one, two. Because I've gotten, you know, people's concerns, obviously. There are, you know, my concerns as well, that, uh, you know, we can't hear you or... You know. A lot of times, because a lot of the places where I kind of go to stealth camp is like near highways, so it's really loud. <laughs> And it helps to have a microphone directly on you. I'll figure it out. I don't know if you can hear that or not in the background. There it is. I was like, is there like a fair or something? Couldn't figure out what it was. And then when I was walking across the hill back there, I noticed there's like guard towers. There's like a prison facility or something over there. And there's people out in the yard and they're like yelling at them, telling them to move along, stop loitering in that corner, stop gathering over there, stop yelling at each other. <laughs> so, all right. I gotta stop for a second. We're gonna make the dash. We are coming in. All right, so we are about, I'd say one hour out. There we go. Of actual, maybe 30 minutes out by now, of actual sundown. So uh, we're, almost, we're almost at the, the entry point though. So hold on, I don't wanna look too conspicuous with the camera out. All right, so <coughs> I'm just waiting for these cars to clear. I've been here three times. <laughs> and the first time I had some technical difficulties that made things like, like I just had to ditch. The second time, a uh, security guard showed up and was like, hey, we don't want people taking pictures of this place. All right, looks like the cars are all good. They're like, we don't want people taking pictures of the buildings. And so they were, there are security guards that cruise up and down here. This is a big, um, it's like a medical facility, national facility. I mean, it's SC Johnson. They make um, the vaccines and whatnot for, um, well, I mean, you know, for the thing. Uh, well, they were. I don't know if they are anymore or not. I don't think they are. But they make like medical like things. So, okay, we're going in.
This is kind of like a little divot, though. It's down here. I'm gonna tuck into these bushes here. All right, now that we're here, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna sneak into the woods here. And then we're gonna sit for a little bit and make sure that everything's cool, that nobody, you know, that indeed nobody saw me. There aren't any hidden cameras that I don't know about, so I'm gonna sneak in. Alright, so we're just gonna sit here for a little bit, make sure things cool. I mean, I think it is. And then once that's done, we're gonna set up the hammock and a tarp. And then we'll take a quick step out into the field out there that's on the outside of us, and um, we'll see what we can see about what we set up. I don't think you really can because I can. I'm having a hard time seeing out into the field. There's like a little corridor right here that I came in through, but it's pretty dense in here. I mean, once you get inside here, it's not too bad, but there's like an opening in the middle, kind of. There's some small trees, so the hammock might be kind of problematic, but I wasn't uh, anticipating when I saw that there was a bunch of trees here. I was anticipating that there would be a couple that were closer than they were, they look a lot further away. I mean, if I was willing to be closer to the edge, it might not be a problem, but I really kind of like the denseness of this little spot in here. So, plus it's got like a nice open spot in front of it so that I can see the wind turbine and I don't have to really go too far to get some really good shots of it, so. So while we're sitting here waiting to make sure everything's cool, Let's talk about these wind turbines. You know, I've heard lots of things about them. First of all, the height of this thing, that's not something I've heard about, that's something I've seen, is pretty tall. The, um, the height of these things can be anywhere from 94 meters to 80 meters. So that's like 308 feet or 280 feet tall. Uh, and that's from the ground to right that center point of the little pinwheel there that spins around. The average blade is anywhere from four feet to 50 feet. So, but these bad boys here can be anywhere from, anywhere from 120 to 200. So how much do these things cost? Well, one of these that you're looking at here that I have can cost anywhere between two and four million dollars, but they generate on average, $1.3 million a year, and that's the revenue that's brought back from the electricity. So all in all, they pay for themselves in anywhere from two to four years. And then after that, they usually take, the estimates I saw were like between 38 and $48,000 a year to maintain them. You know, to have guys come in and like work on them, and there's probably like gears up inside there. I mean, I didn't, I didn't dig too terribly deep. I wanted to get some, some general knowledge. I heard a lot of stuff previous to me looking into these things. They're killing the bird population. Let me tell you what, this spot that I'm in here, bird heavy. If you listen to the background, there's a bunch of crows. There's a bunch of crows. I've seen blue jays. I've seen cardinals. I've seen all kinds of birds. So there's no shortage of bird life around here. And let's put those killing birds things into perspective. I've heard people say that the wind turbines kill about 1 million birds a year because they collide into the blades because uh, they're not accustomed to them being in the environment or whatever. And so they're killing like about 1 million birds a year. But check this out. Far more birds collide with communication towers 
at a rate of about 2.3 million uh, and with power lines at an even higher rate of about 3.5 million or higher. There were some higher numbers, but it sounded just crazy to me. If those numbers weren't like crazy enough, check this out. One billion birds a year collide with plain old garden variety windows. <laughs> so, um, and then, oh, here's one. The biggest, the biggest cause of, um, of death Amongst, among our avian friends is, you guessed it, cats. <laughs> guess, how many, guess how many birds cats get over the course of a year? 1.4 billion birds. Yeah, that's right. So cats, the largest uh, risk, health risk factor of, um, of the lovely bird wildlife um, around us. Look at that. It's like a snail shell. He either succumbed to a bird. Or just gave up on his shell. It's crazy. Alright, well. <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> Dude, I swear. I set the camera up with the intent of like, you know getting me setting up the shelter, right? I set the camera up, I get it all aligned so that it's perfectly right where it needs to be in order to catch me setting it up. And then I forgot to turn the damn thing on while I was like setting it up. So, sorry, but we'll take a look at it here. What are you gonna do? It's one less thing you have to wait around for, right? I'm not wasting any of your time. I'm just getting right to the meat and potatoes. Okay, so the trees were a lot further apart than I would have liked, so I had to use these little guys here. So hopefully that won't, won't impact me too much. I did make sure that I put it really high so that way it would, you know. So that way, you know, at least I'm high off the ground, but I don't expect any rain or anything like that. So I'm just doing a, I got, I like this little thing. I got my, my duck blind thing on there. Let me pull this over a little bit. Uh-oh. I'm going to have to adjust that, but this is my little toggle that I got on here. I gotta make that into a Prusik. I had a Prusik, but I like lost it. It's probably in the grass here somewhere. All right, let's see. There's that there, I'm on that. And there was a, there was a bigger tree on this side that I was able to get to, so. But that's that, so we got that set up. Let's go out and have a look and see if we can see it. All right, we're out. I got it set up, so let's take a look. Yeah, it's pretty dark. I don't think you can see it. Yeah. I went in right through there, and it's just in, in that area there. But it doesn't look like it's visible at all. So...
Cheers. Oh. Oh. Ooh, I love that licorice tea. Have you ever had it? Most people don't like licorice, so. Licorice tea is like one of my favorite things. My grandfather used to love licorice. He would hide it all over the place. <laughs> He had a box, and people would give it to him, and he was, at a certain point, the doctor was like, because li eating licorice apparently will deplete your potassium levels, and he ate so much licorice that the doctor was like, you're no longer allowed to have licorice, um, so stop eating it, and um, you're ordered to have a banana a day, possibly two. Uh, and report back to me and we'll see how your potassium levels are doing in a month or so. And he had licorice hidden in his desk at his uh, garage. He ran a mechanic's garage. And uh, he had licorice in his nightstand. <laughs> he had licorice in the garage, like at his house. Uh, he had licorice in the glove box of his truck. <laughs> that man loved licorice. And people knew it. They would give it to him all the time. He had like hard candy licorice. He had the kind of like Australian licorice and like, you know, the chewy, like twisted kind of licorice. And yeah. Yeah. And I inherited that from him. So I love, I love licorice as well. Um, a licorice stout. Very good. Yes. Um, licorice tea. Uh, of course, you know, the candy, but I digress. So, um, so yeah, that was my week. So, bygones, licorice tea. gang we just had a security guard drive by so I'm sitting quietly I think that he left but I'm not absolutely positive so I'm just gonna give it a minute I was just about to uh, I was just about to cook dinner when I heard a car drive by and uh, so I you know kind of quieted off and everything and ducked down here a little bit. I mean, I'm kind of concealed. There's one side, the side behind me, that's, you know, I had it because it was like a nice view. Um, you know, you've got some blue sky and whatever. While I was uh, cooking tea and uh, I, f I planned on cooking dinner with the same backdrop and then I heard a car driving through so I like kind of like, moved out of the way a little bit. Not that I think that anybody could have seen me, but better safe than sorry, you know. A pound, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So, um, so I'm kind of like sitting and waiting to make sure I don't hear anything over here. I mean, maybe it's a regular security patrol. I just never came across it, but I'm waiting to make sure that everything's cool. And then we're gonna cook. Uh, we're gonna cook a brat. I got a brat with a pretzel bun and some sauerkraut, and I got uh, I got a nice um, it's called Flavor Wave beer from Indeed Brewing out of Minnesota, um, and a uh, Usinger's um, cooked brat. So I, I only have to heat it up. So that's a good part. And then I figured we could have some macaroni and cheese because I got some macaroni and cheese. It's microwavable, but I can work around that. So, all right, let me just, I'm gonna stand up and like check real quick and make sure that, uh, that we're cool. And then we'll get right back to it. Okay, we're back in action. Sorry about the lighting. This is a totally high risk spot, so that's uh, 
that's what's going on. So, I got these cool little hard cases. So, I got the brat and the other in here. I am going to fire up the grill again. I'm just gonna get some water in here. Gotta use a little bit more water than I want because I'm gonna be using the bag and boil trick to heat up the broth. Stay. All right. So, now, for those of you who don't know the bag and boil trick, this is a way you can save yourself time cleaning your pans as well. So I got just a little sandwich baggie. And I've got my brat. And my brat is in here, double bagged. Now, you want to make sure you squeeze as much of the air out of here as you possibly can. So that's going to require you taking it just putting the smallest little hole in there and then rolling this as tight as you can. And that's gonna force all the air out. And you close that back up. I mean, if you can, if you have like one of those food sealer processor things, you can seal it without any air in it too. The reason you don't want any air is because you don't really want it to boil. I mean, to, to float when it's in the thing. So I'm gonna take this while this is heating, before it gets too hot, and put this in. Just gonna fold the lid over. Just make sure that that is stable. And we have a deluxe macaroni and cheese. So, that's there, I'm gonna have to, because I had to adjust because of the security guards. I'm gonna put this on the other side here so I can get my utensils. So, I packed them all into, uh, you'd be proud of me, it was sanitary this time. I packed them all into a nice little Ziploc baggie. Ziploc baggies are nice to have too, because then if you gotta pick up some trash or whatever, you can just kinda put it in there. But, I have pretzel buns, yay, Wisconsin pretzel buns, Wisconsin is world famous for their pretzel buns, I got some mustard packets from the local convenience store, they were so kind to provide those, and last but certainly not least. I got some sauerkraut. Because you can't have brats without sauerkraut. So, I got that. So this is all ready. All right, while that cooks, we're gonna do this part. So I hear you saying, Michael, what's the beer? Good question, my friends. Good question. Keep it nice and cool, but here she is. This is Flavor Wave IPA. This is out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. It is, this is a 6.7 APV, um, alcohol by volume, ABV. I should say that a little bit more clearly, huh? Uh, it has a <clears throat> IBU rating, International Bitterness Units rating of 73 IBUs so shouldn't be too bitter you know it's not it's not like it's like super high I mean it's 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 an IPA so it's gonna be bitter but you know I can hear a truck we're gonna stealth crack this so get ready put the baffle on there
and she is cracked. That's the stealth crack. So, ooh, smell very pineapple. It feels it's very pineapple. -y. Some pineapple and citrus I smell there. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, here's to our wives, girlfriends, and lovers. And pray to the good Lord that the three never meet. <laughs> okay, well, it's got kind of a an even mouthfeel. It's not too carbonated. Um, go away, moth. Not too carbonated. It uh, has a citrusy kind of a finish on it. Go away, moth. You're not in my video. Go away. Moths. You know I hate them. No, I'm just kidding. Don't excoriate me, internet. Um, it's got a, uh, a, a an even mouthfeel. It's not too carbonated. Uh, it uh, has kind of a citrusy finish. I do taste... Uh, I do taste some, uh, you know, pineapple-y kind of notes in there. The, on the nose, it's a lot fruitier. It smells a lot. There's very. It smells very, very um, pineapple-ish uh, when you smell it. So, but uh, overall, not too bad. Uh, it's it's not a super high alcohol content in it, but uh, you know, it, it's not a session. So. At least it's not a session IPA. I mean, no offense to session IPAs. Just, you know, not a fan. If I'm going to drink a beer, I want to be able to drink like two beers, not have to worry about drinking anymore, and then be good with it. You know what I mean? So, here we go. It's a really, really good, really good beer. I'm, uh, I'm kind of happy about it. The turbine has changed direction. It was making a buzzing noise a little bit earlier. I didn't know what the, I was like, what's that buzzing noise? And then I like went over and looked and I was like, oh, the turbine has changed direction. It's like, it adjusted in a different direction. So, pointed in a completely different direction. Um, and it stopped for a little bit. I don't know if it has to stop in order to... I would imagine it would, huh? Yeah, it probably has to stop before it changes. Uh, I don't know if the wind changed direction or whatever. One of the things that I didn't look at when I was looking up turbine facts. So, you know. There's a lot of noise over there. I'm not liking that. It sounds like a loading dock kind of a noise, though. I am familiar with the noises in my environment, but it has been really quiet here outside of that security guard that drove by and kind of parked out there for a little bit. I think this will be okay cooking in here, I'm pretty sure. You know. I had a rice aroni, mm. the San Francisco treat, and I put that in there, um, and I did the same thing. I've done that in the Jeep like a bunch of times. Um, and it turns out fine. And it's, again, a microwave, um, like, meal. It was intended for microwaves. But I think, if you think outside the box, I think you can cook these a bunch of different ways. So, um, or, you know, at least, you know, other than microwave, right? So, um, and that's what we're all about here, is thinking outside the box. I mean correct me if I'm wrong, most other people go to a campground and camp. They don't camp under a wind turbine in the bushes while security guards roam around, right? <laughs> Last time I checked. Gonna get the brat ready. I have a Wisconsin pretzel brat. Check that out. It doesn't have the salt on it. I wish it had the salt on it like, like an actual pretzel. I sliced it open like that. I got some mustard. Um, ooh, look at that. Can you see that? It's, a, it's a sauerkraut. It's Frank's sauerkraut. Voila. Wisconsin brats. So, 
most some people like Johnsonville um, here in Wisconsin Usingers is a really um, it's a local Usingers is it's a local uh, company family owned business my company does some um, or did some work with them I don't know if we still do or not but I like their brats so um, I sent my dad some for his birthday one year so ooh sauerkraut so that you can send them um, if you go to their website and they don't pay me so don't go getting any ideas that I'm a millionaire just because I make videos on the internet. Um, I make nothing, okay? It's really good. All right, so here we go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Can you see it? There's the... It's this the... It's the pretzel bun with the sauerkraut. I hate it when I lose my train of thought and I can't speak. Ooh, that's getting warm. I'm getting the impression that the macaroni and cheese is going to take a little bit longer than the brat's going to be ready and and I'm going to be waiting on this. Okay. So, oh, look at this. So the macaroni and cheese is like, but I got the deluxe. So this has got a packet of actual cheese in it. So I don't have to wait for it to like all mix together. I mean, I kind of got to wait for the macaroni to like, the macaroni to square itself out, but. Other than that, you hear that horn in the background? This is the loudest it's been, like, since I got here. At least it's not the highway, right? Okay. see that or not. Probably not looking at the right area. Let me turn this a little bit. Uh-oh. I've got my headlamp underneath the underneath the thing. I didn't I thought I saw someone move over there. Or something move. My imagination, maybe. Or, you know, security guards will come rushing through the woods here at any moment now. And they will eat my brat and um, probably throw my macaroni and cheese in the ground. Blame me for littering. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, so that part's good. Now, for my next trick. Hey, Rocky, watch me boil this macaroni. Oh, look at that. I took that, I took that thing, I took that brought out of there, the water immediately started boiling. All right, so. Let me come up just. That in there. Ooh, look at that. Man. All right, I'm gonna let that sit because it has to like hydrate that other stuff. Well, if I'd have known that this brat was gonna take so long, I'd have brought a six pack. <laughs> no, not really, I wouldn't have. Don't excoriate me, internet, for thinking that I can 
enjoy more than one adult beverage without looking like a complete alcoholic loser or whatever. Oh, someone sneezing. <laughs> it's a truck driver driving by sneezing. That's crazy. I don't know if you guys heard that or not. A truck driver was just driving by, sneezed, and he sneezed. You hear that? I hear, I hear coyotes. You hear them? They're like behind me somewhere. You think they smell my brats? That's crazy. I didn't expect to, I didn't expect to hear coyotes here. I mean, I'm not exactly like in the city, but I'm like right on the kind of outskirts. I don't know. That's crazy. All right, so I'm gonna check the mac and cheese. Let me get the trusty fork out. Ooh, wow. That's surprising. Those noodles, probably could use a little bit more sitting, but they uh, hydrated relatively quickly. must be part of the process that they do for the microwaving stuff. So while that happens, get the cheese packet ready. This is perfect. If you have the Stanley Billy Pot, the little Stanley, you can see that, see the holes there along the edge? That's for draining. So if you cook pasta in there, you can drain it. That lid fits perfectly on top of Kraft Macaroni and Cheese Deluxe. I'm gonna dump the excess water out of there. For my next try, I am going to take the cheese, which this is a complete bonus. I did not expect this. I expected it was gonna be like the powder stuff. Like when I was a kid growing up, they had like, you know, you open the box up, there was like a powder packet in there. You dump the powder packet in, you gotta mix milk in, you gotta mix margarine or butter in. You know, that's of course after you boil the mac and cheese. Trusty blade. Slice that sucker. Aside from the whole security guard debacle, this has been a really pleasant camp. I must say, the fan, I don't know if you guys can hear that or not. I'll like be quiet later and do some like recording of the actual like blades so you can hear it. But the blades spinning, they have this like rhythmic like woof. Yeah, it's like kind of like a quiet washing machine or like dryer. You know what I mean? It, it kind of like, it's kind of rhythmic. So that's that. I'm gonna put all that garbage in those two, one of those two Ziploc baggies and then I'll just put that inside of the hard case. I have enough stuff to effectively carry out any and all trash and anything that's in here. No, oh, it's just cars on the road. Anything that's in here is all stuff that I made. I'm gonna mix this all in. And I'm going to let this sit. Can you see it's steaming? It's really hot. I'm going to let it sit for a little bit. Right. Ruh-roh, Yogi. Time for another beer. All right. The brat. Mmm. Mm, finally. I keep hearing talking. And I can't tell. Because there's buildings all around me. I'm down in like a divot. So I can see over there, behind where you're looking at me, I can see when trucks come out of the 
thing. I can see them go and then they disappear because there's a big berm, big hump, and I'm down in. Like I can hear that. I don't know if you can hear that truck. I can see it there and then it disappears. And it doesn't reappear, I don't think, until over there somewhere. Can you hear the voices? I hear like voices, dude. I know I hear, I hear like a loading dock behind me and I don't know if it's the people over there on the loading dock talking. There's a building over there too. It's like an office building. I would think nobody would be there. It's an office. But there might be some night workers or something. Hmm. Even though there's not any big salt nuggets on this pretzel bun, the pretzel is still it was very pretzely. Like baked into the skin probably. And the deluxe. The deluxe macaroni and cheese. I'm gonna have to like go around with the light and like make sure I get all the wrappers and stuff up. Ooh yeah, see that? Can you see it? Mmm, cheesy. It's truly deluxe. It had that little packet of cheese, like Velveeta cheese or whatever. I was expecting, like, you know, cheese dust you had to, like, mix together and it had, like, powdered milk mixed in with it or something. Not actual cheese. I guess that's why they call it deluxe, right? Well, I'm going to finish this stuff up. I mean... That's the last of it. I actually just did finish it up. I don't see any lights. Hold on, I see a light. I don't know if that security guard's back or not. Or if that's just a street light and I am paranoid. Nine minutes in. All right. Dinner is done. I only have one beer left. I'm gonna wrap this stuff up. If you know me, you know my tenant about leaving stuff out overnight. That's a no-no. That invites critters into the camp and it makes it so that if you gotta evacuate in the middle of the night, you gotta choose between the gear you love And a non-air-conditioned jail cell. Probably not a jail cell. I'm, it's, I'm exaggerating for drama. Um, but I think that is a street light I see over there. But <clears throat> I'm better safe than sorry. What does Grandpa always say? An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So I'm going to get all of this stuff policed up, all the garbage taken care of, make sure that everything's clean, put everything away in the pack, get it all packed away. So the only thing that has to be taken care of when it's time to go, or if I have to go in a hurry, is to jam everything into the backpack and create a diversion. Um, yeah, so... Uh, 
more momentarily. Most likely a good night I'm going to bed. <laughs> Get the f*** out. Yo. Alright guys. I'm all tucked in. I'm gonna go to sleep. It's still a little warm, so I'm just using the... I'm using the... Sleeping bag. As a, like, under kind of layman thingy. Because it's still... It's plenty warm. This sleeping bag is too, too insulated. So, oh, Dude, I need to like adjust myself here. All right, I'll see you in the morning. Morning, guys. Well, we made it through. Oh man. Okay, I'm gonna go set the camera and get some sunrise and then uh, think about getting this packed up. So, all right, well, I had planned on setting up the camera. I was gonna set up the GoPro so I could get a time lapse of the sunrise, but. I know I emptied the memory card. It says memory card full. No, the memory card's not full. I just emptied it. So, I don't know. Maybe I didn't do something right while I was emptying the memory card. I think there's like little no CMs out here. I find myself suddenly itchy. There were no bugs at all last night, so. Um, I mean, an occasional moth when I turn on the light, but. What about the sound of that windmill going? I'm sorry, wind turbine. That was something. That was kind of cool. So, well, if you guys enjoyed this, and I hope that you did, maybe you learned something that you didn't know. Um, honestly, I don't think it would be bad to have a wind turbine by your house. <laughs> I mean, you come out and camp in the backyard and it's a they're, they're, they're practically silent aside from the wind shear that you're hearing off of the, the blades. And that's kind of like rhythmic and soothing, I thought. So, but if you enjoyed what I, uh, you know, the content that I gave you today, I'd appreciate it if you would like and subscribe. Um, and, um, you have any ideas of anything that you'd like to see me do camping wise then you know you can leave that down there too in the comments uh, I make an effort to answer all the comments um, that you know someone takes the time to to comment I take the time to answer it so all right Let's see if I can't get some shots of the the morning sky clouds blew in last night and they seem to be blowing out now so that'll be good bye Alright, I'm trying to stealth out 
I just realized as I was coming out of here that uh, there's a security guard in there by the turbines. Like right over there, in between those turbines, there's like a parking lot and the buildings for maintaining them. There's a security guard in there. I didn't know it, but I came out, I almost walked in front of him. That was close. But we're out. So, we'll see you in the next video.